in the Mattingly model, at the bottom of the food chain of every ecosystem that's being simulated, uh, are the plants. In the oceans, those plants are plankton, those little microscopic things that the zooplankton eat and the fish eat the zooplankton and all the way up the chain. And on the land, we've got the, the plants with their stems and their leaves and their roots. And in the Mattingly model at the minute, in the ocean, we simulate the plants with uh, a data layer which is predicting marine productivity. It's data that says how fast the, 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 the phytoplankton in the oceans are growing. And that's what's used to support the herbivores, and then the herbivores are eaten by the carnivores, and so on. On the land, we have a dynamical model of vegetation uh, across the, the Global Land Service. And uh, I put that together several years ago now uh, as part of a different study to try and come up with uh, an improved vegetation, an improved model predicting changes in vegetation carbon uh, over the years, over the, over the, the Global Land Service. And that's what we used to model the, the plants at the base of the food chain on, on the land in, in the Maddingley model. Uh, it's like many vegetation models, it represents the dynamics of the leaves and the stems and the roots. And the herbivores in the Maddingley model feed off the leaves and the dynamics of the herbivores are influenced by the dynamics of, of the leaves in the vegetation model. What caused us to build our own vegetation model rather than using one that's already off the shelf is because we realised several years ago that we can put one together whereby we can actually uh, parameterise it. With these parameters represent the, the rates of the different processes that go on in vegetation. We can parameterise it now in a way where we can really obtain parameter values that represent how fast those processes are, what those parameter values are in relation to all the empirical evidence that there is around the world now. For other parts of the Maddingly model, we don't yet have enough global data to allow us to, to do that with such rigour. But for the vegetation component, for the land vegetation component, we can do that. Now moving into the future then, what we're excited about is first of all in the sea doing similar for the sea as what we we've done for the land and really having a, a mechanistic model of what determines uh, the plants in the sea the dynamics of the plants in the sea and similarly do a similar data constraining job for that but also now it opens up this wonderful opportunity of, of studies where we can look at how the dynamics of uh, vegetation uh, and our, you know, perturbations to vegetation which propagate through into their effects on ecosystem structure and function. So how would say vegetation harvesting and patterns of vegetation harvesting influence ecosystem dynamics, spatially and temporally. But also one that I'm particularly excited about over the coming years is also looking at just now the vegetation has the same quality. So we model changes in vegetation quantity, but of course the quality of the vegetation in terms of its nutrient contents, that's currently assumed pretty much to be constant in, in the Maddingly model. Every plant anywhere on earth kind of tastes to herbivores similar to any other plant in the model. Now we want to move into representing the nutrient balance in the plant so we can look at how changes in the say nitrogen and phosphorus context, the, the nutritional quality of those plants will propagate through the rest of the ecosystem and influence the ecosystem dynamics and also how our perturbations to that nutrient balance might influence the ecosystem structure and function by things like nutrient enrichment, fertilization or, or even nutrient depletion over time.